Welcome Padawans to the dojo of Apple Shortcuts. Before you start creating amazing shortcuts and useful automations, you first need to understand the basics, starting with what are Apple Shortcuts? Well, an Apple Shortcut is a quick way to get one or more tasks done with your apps and devices through automation, Siri, or a click of a button. And the Shortcuts app is the platform that lets you build out these customized shortcuts. Personally, I've made tons of shortcuts ranging from easy to complex, but I wanted to make this beginner's guide for anyone who wants to start making their own Apple Shortcuts. If you guys are interested in seeing more shortcuts, and automations that I've personally made or that people have even requested, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you know when those new shortcut videos come out. Let's begin. Now the Shortcuts app can be accessed on your iPhone, iPad, Macs, and even your Apple Watch. So let's open it up here on the iPhone and create our first shortcut. To create a shortcut, you'll hit the plus sign on the top right and you will see the screen where you'll get prompted to add actions from this list below. Now an action is like a building block of a shortcut or a single step of a shortcut. Each shortcut is made up of one or more actions and you can mix and match actions to create shortcuts that interact with apps and devices. The list of actions you could choose from is really massive and I won't explain every single action possible, but I will explain the categories of actions and how to understand how they work. Those actions can be categorized into on-device actions and app-specific actions. Device actions are actions that are already built into your device and doesn't rely on third-party apps. These actions are broken down even further into more groups. The first group is scripted. And this is a category I use a lot for those more complex shortcuts. This is where you can add more logic to your shortcuts, like choosing between options, asking for inputs, getting a certain date, and looping through a list of items. If you guys wanna know what each action does, you can just hit the information icon right next to it and it will tell you how it works. And later in this video, I'll show you an example of the most common script and action used, which is the if action. The next category is controls. This is where you could set certain settings on your devices, like what focus mode you wanna be in, turn it on and off low power mode, or take a screenshot. After that is the device category where you could get details about your device, such as battery percentage, the orientation of the device, and some actions like vibrate your device for some haptic feedback. Next is location, and this one uses your device's GPS to do things based on your current location, a specific place, or even your movement. For example, you would use these actions if you want a shortcut to get you directions from your current location to another, or even get the location of where you parked your car. Media actions let you work with music, photos, videos, and Apple Podcasts. These actions can help you create shortcuts that will play songs, edit pictures, record audio, and much more. Then sharing actions lets you send or share things with other people. This is where you can share files, automate messages, or generate QR codes. The documents category lets you create, edit, and work with files and other types of stored information. These actions are perfect for marking up PDFs, organizing files, or saving content on your device, such as receipts. And lastly, we have the web category. This is where you can search the web, open URLs, or get contents of web pages. These are the device specific actions. And then below that you have the list of Apple's apps and third party apps that have their own specific actions. The third party actions are created by the third party app developers through the shortcuts API, which developers can use to integrate their apps features into shortcuts. For example, the health app can pull your health data, Uber and Uber Eats have their own specific actions to request a ride or reorder food. And Venmo has actions to request Venmos from specific contacts. So let's create a simple shortcut using a couple of these actions. Let's choose a basic action under the media category and choose set volume. Within this action, you will see blue highlighted words. These are areas that allow you to customize even further, like instead of 50% volume, I wanted to go to 75%. Now to test the shortcut, I just hit the play button on the bottom right and you can see it will automatically change my volume to 75%. Now, this is a very simple shortcut, but to get more complex, you would want to add multiple actions together. So let's add another action called play music and then hit the blue highlighted area and let's choose a playlist. And I'm gonna go ahead with childhood throwbacks here and hit the plus sign at the top right to add them. Then if I hit the arrow here, I can also choose to shuffle or repeat song. So now when I test the shortcut, you will see it will adjust the volume to 75% and then start playing the playlist. But let's take it one step further by using scripting. Let's add an if statement by choosing the if action. 
This specific action adds more logic to the shortcut, meaning I can have the shortcut check for a condition before moving to the next action. So let's hit the condition section of the if statement and choose the current date condition. But let's hit the current date action and change it to time. And we'll change it is exactly to is before and the time is 8 p.m. And if you wanna add multiple conditions, you can just hit the plus sign here to check for more conditions, but we're just gonna do one here. Now let's drag the play childhood throwback playlist action below the condition. And then under otherwise, let's add a different playlist. But instead of going to the action list, let's tap the music symbol at the beginning of the play childhood throwbacks action and let's choose the copy set. And then let's hit the symbol next to the otherwise and hit paste below. I did this so I could show you guys an easy way to copy actions from previous steps. But then let's change the playlist here to a different one. Let's do recently added and that's it. So now when I run this shortcut, it is gonna adjust the volume to 75%. And then if the time is before 8 p.m., it will play my childhood playlist. But if it's after 8 p.m., it will play my recently added playlist. This is definitely more advanced and not beginner, but I wanted you guys to see that you can make these shortcuts more and more complex as you add more actions and scripting. So we just completed making our first couple shortcuts here. And once you've done that, you have a few other settings you could customize. If you hit the drop down arrow at the top, you could change the name and icon. You could even duplicate or move it to a folder. And you could also add it to your home screen so it could act as an app that you could click on to activate, which is pretty cool. And you could also export the shortcut if you'd like to share it with someone. Then at the bottom of the shortcut, you'll see an information icon. And when clicked in, you'll see multiple tabs that says details, privacy, and setup. Under details, this is where you can also add your shortcut to your home screen. And you can also show it on your share sheet. So your share sheet is the menu that pops up when you hit the share button, such as a photo, a file, or a website. And when you scroll down, you'll see additional actions. This is your share sheet. It is like a quick access for your shortcuts. Then you have show on Apple Watch setting. This allows the shortcut to show on your Apple Watch so you can activate the shortcut from your Apple Watch. Then for the Mac, you have pin in menu bar, which is the shortcuts icon on the top right of the Mac. The receive what's on screen setting in Apple Shortcuts allows you to capture and use what is currently visible on your screen. When that setting is enabled, your shortcuts can grab things like images, text, or URLs that are displayed on your screen and use them in the workflow. And the use as quick action makes it so that if you right click on a file or text, you could scroll down to services and run that shortcut directly. And this is again, one of the reasons why Apple's ecosystem is the best. It makes the use of these shortcuts really, really easy to use. Now here on the privacy tab, it just asks you if you want a shortcut to be able to run when your phone is locked. I will keep this on unless you have a shortcut that has sensitive information or performs an action that needs to be secure from others. Then on the setup tab, this is where you can import questions. For example, sharing shortcuts doesn't always work right away because it requires the receiving party to input specific information to get it to work. But if I hit add a question, it will allow me to choose the play music step and type out a question, what playlist would you like to play before 8 p.m.? So now when I share the shortcut, the person will be prompted to answer it and it will automatically fill in the shortcut for them. And then back on the shortcuts homepage, if you click in the top left where it says shortcuts, you'll get the folders page where you could create folders to organize your shortcuts. You can choose which ones go to your share sheet or Apple Watch. And towards the bottom, you can see all the apps you have that have Apple shortcuts. For example, when you click into the Amazon app, you can see a bunch of preset shortcuts that you could click to activate or click and hold to add to your home screen or add as a shortcut. There's also a shortcut settings under the settings app. If you go to settings and then apps and find the shortcuts app, you will get more setting options and these are actually very very important this is where you allow your location to be accessed by shortcuts choose your language sync across devices so your shortcuts can show up on all of them and activate private sharing if you want your contacts to share shortcuts with you without permission and then under advanced we have even more settings that are very important as well this allows shortcuts to automatically run certain actions that usually require manual permission. These are things such as running JavaScript code, sharing a large amount of data, and allowing shortcuts to delete data without confirmation. So if you don't have these turned on, then shortcuts that try to do these things will just require you to manually confirm before proceeding. Additionally, you could add shortcuts as widgets by holding down the home screen and then hitting edit, add a widget, and then find the shortcuts app. Here you could choose what size widget you want. Let's just go with the four shortcut one. 
Once added to the home screen, you could hold down the widget and edit the shortcuts you want to have appear on it. And if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or any of the newer iPhones, you could actually have the action button be a shortcut as well. You just need to go to settings, then action button, then choose the shortcut option and pick which shortcut you would like to attach it to. Now you can just activate the shortcut by clicking the action button. This is really nice for your most commonly used shortcuts. You can also add shortcuts to your control center by bringing up the control center and hitting the plus sign on the top left and then add control at the bottom. Search for shortcuts and then choose the shortcut you want to appear. And that's it. Now you can activate the shortcut from the control center. So we just reviewed everything on the shortcuts tab, but next is automations. And this is where the real magic of shortcuts comes alive. But before I dive into automations, if you guys are finding value in this video and are interested to learn more about shortcuts or just how to maximize your Apple products, then please hit that subscribe button to let me know that you guys want more videos like this. Now, diving into automations, automations are when shortcuts activate automatically based on an event. There are two types of automations, personal and home automations. Personal automations are triggered by your personal device like your phone, iPad, or MacBook. However, just know that personal automations you have on your iPhone will not show up on your iPad or MacBook because it is specific to that device. Whereas home automations can be triggered by more than one person or device, such as if someone opens the door or if someone turns on a specific light. This is where a lot of smart home automations are built. So let's start with personal automations. To create a personal automation, you will just hit the plus sign at the top right then everything you see on the screen is considered a personal automation trigger these are things like time of day alarm arrive and leave from a certain place messages bluetooth battery focus modes and much much more but let's make a quick personal automation so you can see how it works let's choose alarm as our trigger you could choose to activate the automation when the alarm goes off is snooze or stopped let's just choose is stopped then you can choose between any alarm, your wake up alarm, or choose a specific existing alarm. For this case, let's just go with the wake up alarm. If you guys aren't aware, the wake up alarm is the one that's at the very top of your alarms that says sleep. And then lastly, you could choose between run after confirmation, meaning you will get a notification to approve automation before it runs, or you could choose run immediately so it doesn't require any manual input. We're done here, so let's hit next. Here's where you input the actions that follow these triggers. You could choose from pre-existing shortcuts or start a new one from scratch. But for this example, let's just create a simple one from scratch by clicking blank automation. Let's have when the alarm goes off, it will send me a text message with the current weather and a good morning message. To do this, we'll find the weather action and choose current weather. This will get the weather for my current location. Then we'll choose create the text I want to send to myself. So I'll choose the text action, then type out a little message. We'll say something like, good morning, Anthony. Here's the current weather with a semicolon. Then this is where you would hit select variable. So select variable lets you choose the outcome of a previous step. So in this case, that was the outcome of the action get current weather at current location. You will see that the variable outcome is weather conditions. So we'll click on that and that variable will load itself into the message. And lastly, to send this as a text message, we will choose the send message action and it will auto populate the text field from the previous step. And then I'll choose my number and then I'll hit the arrow and make sure show when run is toggled off so it automatically runs. So now when the alarm goes off in the morning, I will receive a good morning text message and the current weather. That, my friends, is a personal automation. There's a lot you can do here, so I suggest you guys play around with all the other triggers just to see what things you could automate to make your life easier. And if you want to check out a good morning automation I currently use, then you could click the video on the top right. Now let's get into home automation. So again, home automations can be triggered by other people as well. To create a home automation, you will hit the plus sign again on automations and scroll all the way down to where it says home automation. This will bring up a screen that has different events to choose from. It has people arrive where you can trigger automations based off certain people arriving at a destination. Same with people leave. Then it has time of day occurs to trigger home automations throughout the day. An accessory is controlled like lights or a TV. And then a sensor to detect something. This could be like a motion sensor or a window sensor. But for the example we're about to do, let's just choose an accessory is controlled. And then let's use my front door lock and let's choose unlocks and then for the time we'll choose at night and then for people let's just keep it off but you could choose to have this trigger if somebody is home or not 
Then for the action, we will have the lights in the entryway turned on, which is also my office. And then I want to keep it to a 30% dim. I could then choose to have the lights turn off after a certain time, but I will keep it on never for now. So now when anybody opens the door, the lights in the entryway will automatically turn on because this is not a personal automation, but a home automation. Now you can use smart home devices in personal automations, but they will need to be triggered by that device the automation is on. So I know guys, it could be a little overwhelming to start making shortcuts and automations, but Apple has a third party tab at the bottom of the app called Gallery. This is where you could simply add pre-made shortcuts so you don't have to build them out yourself. There are shortcuts for collaborating, morning routines, and so much more. Hopefully in the near future, Apple can make shortcuts even easier to use with Apple intelligence, but for now, I would definitely explore the gallery or try creating simple ones on your own first. And if you are interested in learning more about complex shortcuts and seeing ones I've created, then subscribe to the channel for those videos. And also hit the shortcuts playlist somewhere on the screen to see ones I've already created. Good luck and feel free to comment any questions you guys have below. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.